We set off for the northern region to refuel. This place is paradise compared to what's further ahead. Beyond our destination lies the closed gate to Nord Belka. Fifteen years ago, the Belkin set off seven nuclear bombs there to stave off the advancing Allied forces, entombing themselves in the frozen valleys to the north. That bit of history should have been enough of a lesson for us all. The seven Belkin cities near the gate were vaporized, and the local area is still highly radioactive. An SSTO craft launch facility lies to the east of our current location, McNeely Air Force Base. The facility was a collaborative project between Osea and Yuktabani. It was built to be a bridge to outer space with a mass driver 7.5 miles in length. Our radar has detected several planes from a Yuktabanian squadron approaching the facility from several directions. The facility is currently conducting pre-launch operations for an SSTO craft. The base commander will provide you with further orders. This is the commander of McNeely Air Force Base. All units, including those refueling at this base, are now under my command. Engage the incoming enemy. All untrained pilots are barred from taking off. Those guys are still kids. efforts to construct an international space station. Our anti-war president used the surplus funds that came from cutting the defense budget to build it. Is that the art bird? The Ark bird. A white bird built as the first step toward the realization of the space station project. Now it's left its orbit and is just low enough to graze the atmosphere. It's coming down to pick up the laser cannon they're about to launch. They were building a bridge of peace that would span into outer space. Not anymore. The machinery meant for this peaceful mission was about to be used for our counterattack. Hey, listen. Yes? Isn't that thing supposed to work like a satellite? Why'd it climb down all this way? It's a maneuverable orbiting spacecraft. I know that. I'm just saying, if the system uses atmospheric friction to change its orbit, then wouldn't that make it pretty hard to defend itself? Hmm. I guess it'd be in trouble if someone started firing at it right now. Yeah! So shouldn't it be higher up then? Continue countdown. Three minutes to launch. Halt the countdown. Enemy incoming. This is the Base Air Defense Command. The enemy has a large formation of transport. 
transport planes escorted by a squadron of fighters. They're conducting an air assault to capture this base. What? They're actually planning to invade Osea? If we shoot the parachutes before the tanks detach, we'll smash them into the ground. You with me? I guess we don't have any other choice. I can't believe that's our strategy. Airborne tanks are dropping from the transport plane. Can you count all those parachutes? I gave up already. Destroy all airborne ACVs. Engage them in the air and on ground. The ACVs are moving this way. Don't let them get near the mass driver. Box 2.
Observation room reporting. The SSTO is climbing smoothly. Congratulations. <laughs> The white bird rose up once again, laser cannon in its wings. It was a moving sight. In my heart, though, I wished it didn't have to be used in war. None of them found out why the enemy targeted the base until much later. Of course, by that time, it was too late. We prevented the Yuktobanian army from capturing the launch facility. The SSTO launch was successful. The SSTO docked with the Arkbird, which had descended into the upper atmosphere, and successfully transferred a laser weapon module over to the craft. All aircraft with the 108th Tactical Fighter Squadron and the Sand Island Detachment returned to base as soon as rearming and refueling operations are complete.